My wife, a lawyer, proposed that we get a fake divorce so she could fake marry my best friend. This was just so his son could get a good school registration. Seeing the affection between them, I put on a big smile and agreed on the spot. But if it's a fake divorce, it's no big deal for me to keep full control of our assets. Right. Chapter 1. Today, Ryan officially divorced Olivia. To celebrate his liberation, he organized a gathering and invited many friends, including Nora and me. My wife Nora was Ryan's lawyer. Without Nora, Ryan and Olivia's case wouldn't have gone so smoothly, nor would he have had the upper hand in the property division. So, his first toast was to Nora. Thank you, sister-in-law. I won't say much else. Cheers to you. Nora slightly frowned and declined. I'm on medication. Can't drink. I gave her a strange look. She wasn't sick. So what medication? Since Nora started dating me, she's always been quite delicate, relying on me to take care of any discomfort. So, I was sure she wasn't on any medication. But I didn't understand why she said that. Ryan's hand holding the wine glass froze. And he stood there awkwardly. He smiled bitterly. It's okay. Sister-in-law. I'll drink. A hint of worry flashed in Nora's eyes. Seeing Ryan down the drink, she bit her lip without speaking, just frowned slightly in reproach. Today, Ryan was truly happy. From Olivia's cheating until now, it had been almost six months, and he had become increasingly disheartened. But today, he was rarely in high spirits. He moved among friends, talking and drinking, enjoying himself. Nora, however, seemed distracted. She even knocked over my dishes twice. The soup splashed on my shirt, but she didn't seem to notice just instinctively wiped the table with a napkin. I opened my mouth to say something, but she suddenly stood up. I'm going to the restroom. Before I realized it, she was out of the private room. Where's Ryan? I asked a friend beside me. He just went out, probably to the restroom. By the way, where's your Nora? I frowned and stood up. Where are you going? Just getting some air. At the end of the hallway, there's a window. I genuinely wanted some fresh air, not to catch an affair, nor did I expect to. At the corner, Ryan was holding his head silently his arm around Nora's shoulders, almost hugging her. Nora didn't dodge. She took out some medication from her pocket and gave it to Ryan, then unscrewed a water bottle, letting him drink in small sips. She glared at Ryan, pretending to be angry. Serves you right. Ryan smiled helplessly. Nora's right, but there are so many people here. If I disagree, I won't be able to save face. Nora snorted coldly. Give you face. Did you forget you have gastritis? Ryan shook his head and smiled. An occasional drink won't hurt. Nora pouted and pushed Ryan away, saying, fine, you're okay, then I won't care about you. Ryan laughed and pulled her back, gently coaxing, all right, all right, my fault, I know you care about me, let's go back, so my brother doesn't worry. Chapter 2, I left, the moment they walked out from the corner, I left, one was my best friend, the other the person I loved most, how was I supposed to face this? But it seemed like I deserved all this now, Ryan has been my childhood friend and my best brother. We grew up together for over 20 years, and my trust in him surpassed everyone else. Likewise, his trust in me was the same. So, when he found out about Olivia's cheating, he didn't worry about me laughing at him. He told me first, it was a very painful period for him. He was obsessed with why Olivia cheated and why she betrayed him. He didn't think about how to handle it, only stubbornly wanted an answer. I drank with him, played cards, took him to the internet cafe we frequented in high school and played all night. At that time, Nora had a big tantrum. She felt I was neglecting her because of Ryan. There was nothing I could do. Having such a brother, since childhood, he followed me everywhere. In elementary school, he insisted on going to the restroom with me. If I didn't want to go, he would hold it in, telling me that good brothers must go to the restroom together. In middle school, he was in the same school as me, always calling me Brother Ming from behind. When I ran for class committee, he canvassed votes for me. When I was in trouble, he supported me. During our university years, although we didn't see each other often, he would check on me every few weeks whether I contacted him or not. When I first started job hunting, I faced significant difficulties. He said without hesitation, stay with me until you find a job and can move out. It's said that even the best brothers living together will have conflicts, but we never had a single argument. I was quick-tempered, and he always calmed me down, offering advice and analyzing pros and cons. He was mild-mannered, often getting taken advantage of without saying a word. When his boss gave him an unreasonable bill, I took people and overturned his booth. Many people said he was my lapdog, but he always said making peace brings money, advising me not to mind. With such a brother, how could I ignore him during his toughest times? So, I tried to balance between both sides, persuading them. Eventually, Ryan made up his mind to divorce, but Olivia disagreed, so they had to go through litigation. Brother Ming, isn't sister-in-law a lawyer, and with such a good reputation, can you ask her to help me with this case, rather than letting someone else earn the lawyer's fee? It's better for family. 
Of course, I wanted to help him as much as possible, but I knew it would be troublesome. Nora's willingness was another matter. Handling a friend's case and taking money was awkward. After all, Nora is Nora, and I am me. If it were me, I would do it for free, but between husband and wife, some things need mutual understanding. So, I said I'd ask, without making any promises. Sure enough, Nora looked troubled when I mentioned it. Honey, I've thought about it. You often talk about your brother, and I always thought he was quite soft. If he meets conflict, I'm worried he might back down or reach unfavorable agreements. What should I do then? From a litigation strategy perspective, a retreating attitude is the most disadvantageous in a negotiation. Also, if the judgment isn't favorable, your brotherly relationship might suffer. Why don't you tell him I don't usually take civil cases, so it's inconvenient? I nodded and conveyed Nora's words to him. Ryan, while drinking with me, poured out his heart. He said that after finally settling down in middle age, his parents passed away one after another. He focused on his career to work hard for his small family, but Olivia cheated and transferred most of their money. Now, relatives don't interact with him, and friends avoid him like the plague. He said he was too unlucky, not knowing which deity he offended. As nothing went right in his life, he vented his misery half the night, saying he didn't know what to do and begged me to help him no matter what. Moved by his words and two beers in, I decided to help him personally. I called people and found out Olivia and her lover's address, planning to give them some legal edge intimidation. However, during our planning, Nora directly stopped me. Her angry glare almost pierced through me. She said, if I knew you were going to do this, I would have taken the case myself. So, Nora eventually took the case, but later, she and Ryan got closer, and when she passed by me, she said, all of this happened because of me. Chapter 3 when I returned to the private room, Ryan was sitting in my seat, laughing and chatting with Nora. Nora smiled as she subconsciously accepted the food Ryan served her, as if this action had been repeated many times before. Ryan noticed me first. His expression froze for a moment before he quickly stood up and waved to me. Brother Ming, where did you go? I didn't see you. I pushed his arm away, just went out for some fresh air. Ryan's eyes were momentarily dazed. He pretended nothing was wrong and smiled at me. Then sit down, I'll go talk to them. I returned to my seat, sat down lifelessly, lit a cigarette, and immediately extinguished it in the ashtray. Nora looked at me with confusion. What's wrong with you? I looked at her, puzzled. What do you mean what's wrong with me? Nora frowned and sulkily began eating. In the years after our marriage, whenever Nora saw me looking displeased, she felt I was giving her attitude, that I was disrespecting her. It seemed like no matter what happened, I always had to appear happy. At that moment, a few people were clamoring to drink with Ryan. Nora showed that worried expression again. I looked at her, finding it quite amusing, and laughed out loud. She glanced at me and then, as if realizing something, quickly avoided my gaze and looked down. I stood up and poured a glass of wine, addressing Ryan politely. Brother, you've drunk everyone else's toast, but you can't refuse mine, can you? He smiled awkwardly and then politely said, Of course not. How could I refuse Brother Ming's toast? I glanced at Nora's mixed expression of anger and worry. Then at Ryan's helpless face as he drank, I felt quite pleased. After one glass, I naturally toasted another. The people around us marveled at how close Ryan and I were. Later, Ryan drank a lot, but it seemed like I drank even more. In a state of semi-consciousness, Nora grabbed my hand, but I instinctively pushed her away. In the end, Ryan on my left and Nora on my right supported me into the car. Nora said to Ryan, Why don't you come with us? I'll drop you off first. Ryan shook his head. No need. I'll take a cab. You take Brother Ming home. Nora, thinking I was too drunk to be aware, said, It's too late, and you've been drinking. I won't feel at ease. It's on the way. Ryan suddenly lowered his voice. Sister-in-law, don't. I'm fine. You take Brother Ming home. I overheard everything without any burden, then closed my eyes and turned over. Ryan ultimately didn't get in our car. The ride home was silent. No music. No conversation. That night, Nora stayed up all night in the living room watching videos. I... On the other hand, slept soundly and, for once, had a pleasant dream. Chapter 4 Ryan's case was not smooth from the beginning. As Nora described, Ryan's personality always made him indecisive. A lawyer needs to know the facts to provide corresponding strategies. But Ryan often missed the point, and he would gloss over key issues. Sometimes, seeing him so hesitant, I couldn't bear it and often impatiently urged him to face the problems. Nora sighed and called me outside, saying, Honey, let him talk to me alone, maybe with you around. He's embarrassed to talk about family matters. After all, it's pretty humiliating. That day, they talked in the office for over an hour. When they came out, Ryan's brow was unusually relaxed, as if a weight had been lifted off his shoulders. He said, Thank you so much, brother and sister-in-law. I asked what happened. He said, 
Sister-in-law is very considerate and respects my feelings. He looked at me with envy in his eyes. That look in his description made my heart skip a beat, but I didn't think much of it. I asked Nora what she did. She said, nothing much. I just had a heart-to-heart -heart with him. Told him most families have their own misfortunes. And some things must be faced. I also encouraged and comforted him. Men need some respect. And once that's considered, they open up. I'll handle future contact with him alone. Sure enough. From that day on, the case progressed more smoothly. At first, Ryan would chat with me about the progress. I don't know when, but our contact became less frequent. Until one day, I called him to ask about the case's progress. He casually said, what progress? I'm not sure. Sister-in-law is handling everything. I replied helplessly. All right. I'll ask her tonight. He said there was no need. Nora is right next to me. I'll let her talk to you. So, suddenly, through my brother's phone, I spoke to my wife. Nora said something, but I wasn't paying attention. I just thought their relationship seemed a bit too close. Nora teased. Are you unhappy that I'm getting along well with your brother? I casually asked her. Do you still think Ryan is soft and prone to backing down? At the time, Nora was busy with her laptop, taking a break. She laughed. Actually, he's quite interesting. Too many clues made my suspicious mind more and more tense. When did that string break? It should have been that early morning. Nora and I were both asleep when her phone suddenly rang. Half asleep, she answered. I don't know what she heard, but the next second, she sat up suddenly. She said, I'll be there right away. Ryan, don't open the door for her and don't talk to her, but keep the recording on. I'll call the police first. Wait for me. She then hurriedly started finding her clothes. Nora, unlike my carefree self, always did things methodically. Though we influenced each other over the years, I had never seen her this anxious. It gave me a bad feeling. I asked her, what happened? She said, Olivia went to see Ryan again. She's threatening to kill herself if he doesn't open the door. You go back to sleep. I'll handle this. I blurted out. Shouldn't he have called me first? Why call you? Wouldn't it be more useful if I brought some people over? Nora turned around, stunned. Her eyes filled with disbelief. She said, Samuel Ming, what are you thinking? He's your best friend. His parents died. His wife cheated. And he's tormented by lawsuits. Are men's hearts made of stone? Why do I see no sympathy in your eyes? Ryan only has you as a friend. Have you ever cared for him? Every time he asks you out, you say you're busy. When have you ever gone when he called? Is this how you treat a friend? Yes, he is my best friend. But when he had a problem, he contacted my wife first. Nora was furious, almost slamming the door as she left. I stood there for a long time, suppressing my turbulent emotions, and finally decided to follow and see. When I arrived, Ryan's door was open. His sighing voice came from inside. She almost slit her wrists at the door. She said if she died, it'd be my fault and she'd haunt me forever. Nora, maybe I shouldn't push her too hard. Nora's gentle voice responded. It's okay, she won't really do it. Ryan, look at me, trust me. Okay, seeing you like this makes me. I didn't hear more and went straight in, saying, what are you two doing? In retrospect, I was just deceiving myself. I didn't want to hear too much. Didn't want them to continue talking. Didn't want to hear what I didn't want to hear. Chapter 5. Lately, Nora has been going to the law firm very early, and by the time I wake up, she's already gone. She made me breakfast, left it on the table, and left a note reminding me to eat. I stared at the food on the table for a long time but eventually didn't touch it. At noon, while I was arranging for my employees to collect debts, I got a call from the property manager. He asked if we had forgotten to turn off the faucet at home because the downstairs neighbor complained about a leak. It was ridiculous. That house had been unoccupied for a long time, and even the main valve was turned off. So how could there be a leak? I hurried over there. It turned out to be our problem. The bathroom faucet was gushing water, and the water on the floor had spread out. I quickly turned off the faucet and apologized to the downstairs neighbor, negotiating compensation. I put on a smiling face, listened to their complaints and grievances, and finally resolved the issue. After sending the downstairs neighbor away, my face turned cold. The property manager asked if I had rented out the house and who was living there now. Yes, who was living there? It was Ryan. Unexpected, right? I didn't expect it either. When I saw the photos of him and his son on the cabinet, a rush of blood surged to my head, and my nails dug deeply into my flesh. Was I blind? I thought I was calm enough, but when I took out my phone to make a call, I found my hand trembling. How embarrassing. These hands meant for hitting were shaking like a leaf, taking a deep breath, suppressing the urge to scream. I called Nora. No answer. I called Ryan. Still no answer. What was I supposed to think? What could I think? Without hesitation, I went straight to Nora's company. She might not be there, or she might be. If she was, what should I say? My mind was in chaos the entire way. 
I never expected Ryan to be in Nora's office. Nora was sitting, and Ryan was standing behind her. He was bent over, one hand on the table, the other holding the mouse, and Nora. She was tilting her head, looking at him intently. I knew that look. I knew what it meant. Bang. I pushed the door open forcefully, and it hit the wall with a crisp sound. Chapter 6 The office was left with just Nora and me. Nora said, Honey, I want to help Ryan. He resigned and is now at a low point in his life. So he asked me for advice, and I suggested he look at some course outlines. If he's interested, he could pursue a master's in law. Whether for further studies or a related career, it's a good path. Our firm is also hiring. This Nora felt so unfamiliar to me. I never knew you cared so much about clients. Nora looked at me irritably. Stop with the sarcasm. There's nothing between Ryan and me. Innocence speaks for itself. I nodded. Got it. But as I got up to leave, she grabbed my sleeve and asked, What do you mean? I looked at her, puzzled. Isn't it clear? Do as you please. When I opened the door, Ryan was standing outside. He looked anxious, pale. Ming, it's not what you think. Let me explain. No need for explanations. Nora has made it clear. He seemed even more terrified, quickly glancing at Nora, then back at me. What did she tell you? I smirked. Does it matter? Ryan's hair seemed to stand on end. I'd said those words to many people before, and their outcomes weren't good. But Nora suddenly spoke up. Honey, don't threaten him. There's really nothing between us, I swear. Ryan sighed in relief. I knew these two too well. Sometimes I was grateful for this familiarity. Other times, I hated it. By the way, I said to Ryan, you forgot to turn off the faucet when you left today. Next time, be careful, you know. That house was left to me by my parents. Can you move out in three days? And Nora, please return the keys. Ryan's eyes widened, looking at me in horror, his face growing paler. Nora stepped forward, wanting to speak. I shook my head at her. There are so many people here. You don't want me to make a scene, do you? I walked away without looking back. I heard that after I left, Ryan fainted. Nora told me this when she came back to pack her things. I let him stay in the old house because Olivia kept pestering him. You're his best friend. You know his state. He quit his job and went home because those life issues were overwhelming him. Now, because of your threats, he's becoming more anxious. I just wanted to help him. I was going to discuss it with you, but you were always suspicious. We didn't want you to misunderstand. She said, I know you're upset with me now, so let's take a break. There's a big criminal case that needs our team's attention, and it might be an opportunity for me. I'll stay at the firm for a few days. Nora. I called her. You're going to the firm, right? Nora looked at me, her eyes cold. She said, Samuel, what do you want from me? Can't I have my own career? Then she stormed out, slamming the door, leaving without hesitation. Suddenly, I remembered what Ryan said to me that day when we were drinking. He said that day he angrily questioned Olivia, why are you doing this to me? Didn't you say you'd always be by my side, no matter what? Always supporting and encouraging me. And Olivia. She just smiled faintly as if talking about something ordinary to an ordinary person. She said, everything in this world changes. Why can't I? Why can't my feelings for you change? That day, Ryan smiled bitterly. What's even stranger is that she was the one who cheated. She was the one who fell out of love. But in the end, she shamelessly said she never thought about divorcing me, as if not divorcing me was a favor she was doing for me. Chapter 7 I went to the hospital the next afternoon. Before going to the hospital, I stopped by Nora's law firm. She wasn't there. Her colleague told me. It's lunchtime. She should be at the hospital. She's been going there on time these past few days. The colleague stopped mid-sentence, looking at me awkwardly. She's just kind-hearted and kind to everyone. Don't overthink it. I smiled and left. Nora. Kind-hearted. Not really. On the contrary. She's a bit cold. She's always clear about her own business and others. In her words. Not empathizing is part of my professional ethics and respect for myself and others. For so many years. She never did anything that could lead to misunderstandings. If she's good to someone, it's genuinely from the heart. When I got to the hospital, Nora was gently persuading Ryan to eat. You need to eat something. Your stomach is bad. You can't go on like this. Think about it. Your parents wouldn't want to see you like this. Sister-in-law, you're so good to me. But Brother Ming seems like he can never forgive me. Nora sighed. That's just his temper. I'll talk to him. And I'll also talk to him about that other thing. Talk to me. About what? I was puzzled. But Ryan suddenly grabbed Nora's shoulder. Don't tell Samuel. This is my business. It has nothing to do with you guys. I'll solve it myself. Don't involve Brother Ming. Nora looked worried. Her hand unconsciously brushing against Ryan's palm. But when she realized it, she carefully pulled back. I stood at the door, numbly watching it all. A sharp pain pierced my heart. I bit my teeth. Using the pain to suppress the pain, I asked, What do you want to talk to me about? The moment they saw me, Ryan looked terrified. And Nora stood up quickly, putting distance between herself and Ryan. 
Ryan looked at me in panic, trying to force a smile. Samuel, you're here. I looked at him expressionlessly, then turned to Nora. Speak. What do you want to talk to me about? Nothing. Nothing. Ryan denied it immediately. Nora stepped forward and said, Honey, there's something I want to ask you for help with. I motioned for her to continue. Ryan tried to stop her, but Nora didn't give him the chance. She said, Samuel, let's get a divorce. Samuel, it's not easy for Ryan to raise a child alone. Now Nico's school registration is a problem without the right household registration. Let's help him one more time. Once Nico's schooling is settled, we can remarry. Okay. I never thought I'd hear something so absurd. I doubted my ears were working correctly. What? Ryan, pale, shook his head vigorously. Brother Ming, that's not it. Sister-in-law is overthinking it. I can handle it myself. Nora, like a car with failed brakes, continued. Honey, let's get a temporary divorce. Ryan kept waving his hands, saying, Brother Ming, sister-in-law is confused. It's her lawyer's occupational habit talking. That's why she came up with such a ridiculous idea. Nora, with a persuasive look, said to me, It's nothing. Samuel, many immigration lawyers do this. Fake marriages and divorces are common. You might not have heard of it. So you think it's a big deal. But sometimes you have to make way for the living. A marriage certificate or divorce certificate is just a piece of paper. Nico's future is the most important. It's just a formality. Her words made me feel extremely nauseated. Silently, I clenched the divorce papers I had just drafted and shoved them back into my bag. I said. Nora, you're dreaming. I thought. If that's the case, we need to reconsider the division of assets. Chapter 8 Nora chased after me as I left the hospital. She grabbed my hand. Her brows furrowed with confusion. Samuel, let's talk. I sneered. Talk about what? Divorce. Nora, you can say anything, can't you? Nora frowned and said. It's a fake divorce. I just want to help him. Nora, do you even believe what you're saying? I'm telling the truth. Why don't you believe me? I replied half-mockingly. All right, I'm in no hurry. Or you could sue me. You haven't handled a case for yourself yet, have you? Nora looked at me seriously, a hint of grievance in her eyes. Honey, I'm discussing this with you. I said I don't want a real divorce. This is just a last resort. I thought for a moment, then nodded and said. Nora, are you out of your mind? This reason might convince you, but it won't convince me. If you want to convince me, you'll need to be more practical. Nora was about to say something when her phone rang. I turned and left. She wanted to follow but hesitated when she saw the caller ID. She said, we'll talk later. I silently looked at my hand for a while. Then turned and left, on the way out. I glanced back and saw Nora's back as she hurried into the hospital. Ryan said he wanted to talk to me. I agreed. We met at a restaurant we used to frequent. Ryan looked unwell, as if he were sick, very haggard. When he saw me, he stood up awkwardly. Brother Ming, you're here. Please sit. What would you like to drink? I ordered a pot of tea and sat down, lightly tapping my fingers on the cup. Go ahead. What do you want to say? Ryan gave an awkward smile. Brother Ming. Don't listen to sister-in-law. She's just worried about my kid's schooling. I'll handle it myself. I can't trouble you and your wife anymore. Ryan was smart for once. He lumped Nora and me together, making it seem like we both wanted to help. But it was too late. Ryan, do you like Nora? Ryan shook his head repeatedly. I don't. How could I? How could I possibly like her? Then I don't understand. If you don't like her, why give her hints? I didn't. Ryan denied it vehemently. Brother Ming, I swear I didn't. I shook my head. Smiling, Ryan, adults have their boundaries, we're both men, do I need to explain what certain behaviors mean, do you think your relationship is just between a client and a lawyer, between a doctor and a patient, a landlord and a tenant, there are behavioral boundaries, do you think you haven't crossed the line, but with hints, not every woman would shamelessly initiate, you two are quite in sync, aren't you, I smiled as I finished, my fingernails scratching the cup's surface with a grating noise, Ryan's face turned as white as a ghost, he looked at me in fear and said, Samuel, I really didn't. I coldly stared at him, didn't, Ryan, I have to admit, you're very good at reading women and understanding their emotions. When I used to ride in your car, what did you say? You said your passenger seat was only for Olivia or your girlfriend. I called you a hopeless romantic back then. I said, what's the big deal? I'm a man. And you said it still mattered because women care about these small details. So I want to ask, what were you thinking when you had Nora sit in the passenger seat when you came to see me? Ryan froze in place. I pointed across the way. I was there before you came. The view was quite clear. So I clearly saw Nora coming with Ryan. And when they got out, she stood on tiptoe to tie his scarf. Ryan opened his mouth. I interrupted him. Don't tell me she's just too kind and worried about you as a client. Ryan, if you insist on that, I'll have to assume you think I'm a fool. If that's your point, our conversation ends here. What do you think? 
Ryan slumped back in his chair. I looked at him indifferently. He said, Brother Ming, I was wrong. I'm sorry. I really was wrong. He continued, My parents died, my wife cheated, and I suddenly felt like I had no purpose, like I was me, and everything else was separate. Brother Ming, I never thought anything would happen with sister in law. I just couldn't let go of her kindness and concern, and that led to this. He said he was just too empty inside and needed a woman to fill the void. Unfortunately, that woman was my wife. I'm sorry, Brother Ming. I was wrong. From the moment Nora suggested the fake divorce, I knew I was wrong. Don't worry. Nothing ever happened between us. I'll draw the line and return her to you. We won't see each other again, Brother Ming. Forgive me this once, please? I smiled noncommittally, mockingly. I said, only now do you realize, brother, you're still not being honest. So, your first reaction in an emergency at night was to call her, not me. If I hadn't shown up, do you think it's normal for a man and a woman to be alone together? She dared to let you stay in my house out of pure kindness. Do you think that's normal? As a client, she's making career plans for you, even trying to get you into her firm. Do you think that's normal? You say it's just because you can't let go of her kindness and concern. That's a tough claim. You two are practically glued together, and you only realized the mistake when she suggested the fake marriage. It's not like that, Brother Ming. I feels good, doesn't it? My woman goes out of her way to be good to you, even willing to divorce me. Must be thrilling, right? Ryan shook his head. He seemed unable to say anything but shake his head. Stop pretending. Ryan, you just said you'd return her to me. You used the word, return, implying you assumed she was yours now. Right. So I'm not wrong. You two must have already confessed your feelings. Right. Ryan looked up, shocked, staring at me in disbelief, as if he couldn't understand how I knew. Ryan, I've known you for over 20 years. No one knows you better than I do. My words shattered Ryan's composure. Samuel. Remember the men Olivia cheated with? I met him before your lawsuit. He wasn't with Olivia anymore. He even had a new girlfriend and was planning to get married at the end of the year. He was doing well, very at peace, almost like he had been reborn. He wanted to apologize to you, saying he was immature back then and hoped you could forgive him. He said he had moved on and hoped you could too. I understand Ryan. Likewise, he understands me. He knew what I was implying, so he begged me to stop. But of course, I would continue. Can you forgive him, Ryan? He tore your family apart, messed up your life, and then just walked away with an apology. Why does he think you should pick up the pieces he left behind? Why does he think you should accept his return? Ryan, why is he so awful? I added, I really considered you a brother back then, but I admit I was short-sighted, not expecting Olivia to cling to you after that guy disappeared. Chapter 9 Ryan was trembling all over and asked me what I wanted. I sneered, a divorce, making room for you too. Ryan's lips quivered. I never thought about it before, and I never will. Brother Ming, I won't be with her. His words were as solemn as an oath. Really? That's your business. I looked out the window. I said nothing. But if Nora knew Ryan was saying this, she'd probably be devastated. That thought made me smile. Seeing my smile, Ryan hurriedly said, Brother Ming, if you want a divorce, then divorce her. She doesn't deserve you. I stood up and looked at him with disdain. Before leaving, I said to him, Ryan, you don't need to call me brother anymore. We stopped being brothers long ago. Ryan and I truly grew up together. From kindergarten to marriage, always the best of brothers. Back then, our families lived close, just upstairs and downstairs. When we were kids, his parents often fought, and he was scared, hiding in the hallway crying. So I'd take my allowance, treat him to snacks, and bring him to my house to play games with me. I'd even stand up to his dad who wanted to hit him. Later, seeing how pitiful he was, I started having him over for meals and to do homework together every day. Everyone knew that Samuel's best friend was Ryan. Everyone knew that Samuel always stood behind Ryan. If I had food, he'd never go hungry. I never minded giving and taking with him. From kindergarten to high school, the farthest we were ever apart was the distance between two classrooms. Even in college, we never lost touch. My dad joked, I should just adopt you as my godson. Ryan nodded. I grew up eating Ming's family's food. Calling Samuel brother and calling uncle dad is only right. How laughable. To be betrayed like this by the person I trusted the most. I truly deserved it. Nora came home at dusk. She said to me, Honey, let's just help Ryan. He's your best friend. You can't bear to see him down and out, right? I nodded, saying, yes, but I'm not a lawyer. I can't take divorce lightly. It makes me uneasy, especially since a divorce involves dividing assets. Even if the divorce is fake, the procedure is real. She replied, honey, it's just a fake divorce. When the time is right, we'll remarry. If you're worried, I'll transfer all the assets to you. I looked at the woman in front of me, seeing her head over heels in love, seeing her deceive herself. I made a helpless expression and said, all right. Let's get a divorce then. 
Our divorce process was smooth and quick. The divorce agreement was prepared by her. The property, car, and bank savings were all given to me. On the day we got the divorce certificate, I asked Nora to move out of the house. She was stunned, confused. What do you mean? I said. The house is mine. We're divorced. Isn't it normal for you to move out? We're only fake divorced. Who told you that? Samuel, what do you mean? I laughed coldly. Nora, I never intended to fake divorce you. Nora was smart. She realized instantly. You tricked me. Tricked you? Not really. Nora stared at me helplessly for a long time. Finally, she said, you don't have to do this. There's nothing between Ryan and me, and there never will be. I just wanted to help him. There's no possibility between us. That's irrelevant to me. Samuel, what do you want? Looking at the incredulous Nora, I found it ridiculous. Nora, you really don't know me. Do you really think I could ignore the ambiguity between you and Ryan? Do you really think I, Samuel, could swallow this? I can't, but what can I do? I can't kill you, so just stay away from me. Don't stand in front of me and disgust me. My words were harsh. Nora's eyes showed a trace of helplessness. Samuel, don't treat me like this. I sneered at her, shaking my head, signaling her to leave quickly. Her face turned red with anger, and she said furiously, Fine, don't regret this. Chapter 10 Nora moved out, taking only one suitcase. I asked her what she planned to do with the rest of her stuff. She said, Throw it away. She was angry. She even thought I was acting out of spite too. I smiled and nodded. All right, I got it. The next day, I cleared out all of Nora's personal items. For her work-related stuff, I hired a courier to send them to her law firm. As soon as the items were delivered, Nora called me, sounding extremely aggrieved. Samuel, what are you trying to do? What am I trying to do? What a stupid question. Nora, can you stop being stupid? I hung up and blocked her on all communication platforms. From that day on, I cut off all contact with Nora. Later, Ryan sent me a message. Brother Ming, I'm leaving. I won't bother you anymore. A couple of days later, he sent another message. I gave custody of the child to Olivia. She will handle his schooling. I was too stubborn before, thinking a mother like her would affect our son's future. But now I realize, it's just a case of the pot calling the kettle black. She is still Nico's mother. Brother Ming, I'm sorry. I decisively deleted the messages without replying. Not everything in this world can be forgiven with a smile. If everything could be erased so easily, that would be great. What happened between Nora and Ryan, I don't know, and I didn't bother to find out. However, after Ryan told me that his son's schooling issue was resolved, Nora drank a lot. Her friend called me, Brother Ming. Nora is drunk. Can you come and pick her up? I said, we are divorced. I thought I had made myself clear, but I didn't expect Nora to come to me on her own. Though she had a slight smell of alcohol, her eyes were clear. I knew she wasn't drunk. I asked her, what are you doing here? Nora smiled at me. Honey, Nico's schooling is settled. Let's remarry tomorrow. I was silent for a few seconds. Nora, are you joking? Nora's lips pressed into a straight line. We agreed on this. It was a fake divorce. Her tone made me feel absurd. Just like when I first heard her say she wanted a fake divorce. Nora, I don't believe you can't see it. Is it fun to deceive yourself like this? I tried to close the door, but Nora blocked it. Honey, let's talk. Talk. Nora and I missed the best time to have a good talk long ago. Now it's too late to say anything. But since she wanted to talk, I would talk with her. I just hoped this farce would end here. But how to start the conversation? I couldn't find a clue for a moment. Finally, Nora spoke. She said, our fake divorce was just to help Ryan. Now that Nico's issue is solved, let's remarry. Okay. Nora didn't start well. The same old topic. And it wasn't what I wanted to hear. I said, if you want to talk like this, then I don't think it's necessary. I tried to get up and see her off, but Nora pulled me back. She screamed, what do you want? I won't contact Ryan anymore. I told you before, I was just helping him. This was the last time I helped him. Her question stunned me, what do I want? Is it about what I want? From the beginning to the end, she never asked for my opinion. At that moment, the emotions I had suppressed for months finally exploded. I had been struggling to maintain my dignity as a man. The harm Nora and Ryan caused me was not just emotional betrayal. It was the collapse of trust. When they treated me like a fool, secretly flirting under my nose, when they humiliated me to this extent and still thought I should endure it, I began to reflect on myself. What did I do to make others think they could walk all over me? Were they secretly mocking me when I was being sincere with them? Mocking me for being a blind and foolish idiot? Nora, the worst part is you. If you wanted to love someone else, a divorce would have sufficed. But you chose Ryan, knowing he was once my best brother, and still kept things ambiguous with him. Nora. You're despicable. You say you won't contact Ryan anymore. Is it because you don't want to? Or because Ryan won't contact you? He blocked you, didn't he? Nora. 
Ryan is a scumbag, but you are worse than him. You're turning back now because you think we can still make do, right, but why should I make do with you? Why do you think you're so despicable that I still have to take you back? You say Olivia is a bad woman, but how are you, Nora, any different from her? Do you need me to spell it out for you, if I ignore you? You still want to degrade yourself by coming to me. You still refuse to admit your mistake, putting all the blame on me. It's my suspicion, my dirty thoughts, my narrow-mindedness, my selfishness. Isn't that right? Nora, you really deserve to be scolded. My sudden outburst left Nora stunned. She said, I never blamed you or wanted to hurt you. Samuel, I never wanted to hurt you. I sat on the sofa, closing my eyes slowly, and said, What do you mean by not wanting to hurt? Clearly liking someone else but hiding it from me. Isn't it that you feel it's painful not to be with another man, but at the same time you think you're doing it for me, maintaining our family's dignity, protecting my face, so you feel noble? Nora, I see it clearly. Your ambiguous relationship with Ryan was mixed with your revenge against me. You've been dissatisfied with our marriage for a long time, right? You've long been tired of our relationship, right? You think I've restrained you, possessed you, and that a little revenge doesn't matter. You think all I lose is my dignity as a man while you lose love, right? But Nora, you're not as important as you think, and I'm not as pathetic as you think. I said long ago, if you don't like it, get a divorce. Whoever leaves will move on. Nora seemed to be hit hard. Her body slumped down. She leaned on a chair and muttered, it shouldn't be like this. We shouldn't have become like this, but what should we be like? When she agreed to my proposal, she said she loved me and would love me for a lifetime. When we got married, she said she loved me and would stay with me for a lifetime. Later, during the days and nights we spent together, once I felt she wasn't happy with me and mentioned divorce, she cried angrily, saying anything was okay but not divorce, but she strayed, she forgot her promises, and she expected me to wait for her, why? Chapter 11 Nora left, stumbling slightly, her figure disappearing into the distance with a sense of loss, she never appeared in front of me again, there were no further developments between her and Ryan, the last message I received from Ryan was not long ago, he said he was going back to his hometown. He said he didn't want to stay in the city anymore. He said, Brother Ming, everything that happened was my fault. I deserve this miserable ending, but I've always considered you my brother. Whether you acknowledge me as your brother or not, you'll always be my brother. I found his words laughable, but for the sake of our brotherhood, I personally saw him off to his hometown. Epilogue, Nora's perspective. My introduction to Samuel was quite dramatic. It was when I was in university, working part-time as a tutor in an old neighborhood. No elevator, no security system not even functioning stairwell lights. That day, I arrived on time and pushed open the iron door to the hallway, coming face to face with him and standing at the first floor exit. I didn't move, waiting for him to go upstairs or leave, but he didn't move either. At that moment, fear gripped me. Could he be a bad person? What should I do? Run away. But I felt frozen, unable to move. Even my breathing almost stopped. After what felt like an eternity, someone finally came downstairs. They asked the men, why are you just standing there? Weren't you going out for a smoke? The man chuckled. I think I scared this young lady. That man was Samuel. I didn't get a clear look at his face that day until he approached me later at school and greeted me. He spoke softly, as if afraid of scaring me. He was a gentle and considerate person, quite unlike Ryan. Ryan was sensitive, melancholic, always full of worries, and timid, unable to shoulder responsibilities. I didn't like him much, especially when Samuel got hurt because of him. By then, Samuel and I were already together. I was furious, cleaning his wound and asking, aren't you afraid? He laughed sheepishly, of course, but how can a big brother ignore his little brother in trouble? Don't worry, I know what I'm doing. Samuel was always like this, never taking my advice, never needing anyone's help. I asked him why, he said he was used to it. Later, I often thought, maybe it was because Samuel was always so headstrong, too much of a macho man, that when a warm and respectful guy like Ryan came along, I got lost, that time. He got drunk because he was sad, and I went to pick him up, listening to him talk about his deep feelings for Olivia, hearing him self-destruct and self-deprecate, seeing his pain, my heart ached, and I suddenly wanted to hug him, give him all my love, save him, and so, it spiraled out of control, I paid more and more attention to him, cared more and more about him, felt more and more for him, I realized I liked him after a partner told me, you're being impulsive, such a small case shouldn't affect you like this, if you're not feeling well. Let someone else handle it. Don't let emotions get in the way. After hearing those words, I spent three hours on the rooftop, until Ryan called. I made something tasty. Do you want to come over? At that moment, I was filled with tenderness, even smiling as I replied. Sure. I had fallen for Ryan. I had fallen for my husband's best friend. I could feel that he had feelings for me too. 
but neither of us broke the silence. We pretended nothing inappropriate had happened. Pretended we were just doing what ordinary friends do. We even deliberately ignored Samuel's presence. Samuel said that when I was being ambiguous with Ryan, it was out of revenge against him. I vehemently denied it. But deep down, I knew Samuel was right. I didn't want to hurt Samuel. I just didn't love him anymore. I transferred my affections to someone else, but I didn't seek a resolution. I gave up my own love to fulfill his desire for dignity, to maintain the facade of a harmonious family. I wronged myself and Ryan, but I felt I hadn't wronged Samuel. That was my thinking back then. I was lost, obstinate. But even then, I felt a vague sense of guilt towards Samuel. The first time I felt a crisis was when Samuel caught Ryan and me together one night. He questioned what we were doing. At that moment, Ryan and I panicked. The embarrassment and shame of being caught made me lash out. I blamed Samuel for having dirty thoughts, trying to cover my own disgrace. That was the first time I considered ending things with Ryan. So I called Ryan. I said, Ryan, I like you. The kind of like where I want to be with you. But I can't betray Samuel. Ryan, tell me, what should I do? Ryan was silent for a long time. Finally, he said, Samuel is my brother. You can't betray him. We promised each other that once the case was over, we wouldn't see each other again. So we treated that time as our last hurrah. That's why we were so careless, so full of flaws. But I didn't care anymore. Thinking about losing my true love for the rest of my life, I wasn't afraid of anything. True love. It came fast and went fast. So what true love? It was just a surge of hormones. When I realized Samuel truly wanted to divorce me, I felt like I had fallen from a great height. I deceived myself, telling myself Samuel was just angry with me. That once I ended things with Ryan, he would come back to me and love me as he did before. I went to find Ryan, and he looked at me with a complicated expression. He said, you shouldn't have come. His gaze had changed, becoming clear and honest. How strange. Just a few days ago, we were madly in love. But Samuel's decisive action was like a loud gong, waking us up instantly. Ryan sarcastically asked me, you didn't really think about marrying me, did you? What do you mean? Ryan laughed. He shook his head as he looked at me. You don't deserve to be Samuel's wife, and I don't deserve to be his brother. Ryan was just seeking a sense of accomplishment with me, and I. I was equally blinded by the thrill of the affair, unable to distinguish right from wrong, Olivia said. Everything in this world changes. Why can't I? Why can't my feelings for you change? I called her a scumbag, but I ended up becoming the person I least wanted to be.